Good morning, everyone. Thank you for returning for day four of TTG Aussie Fest, the luxury edition. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the whiskey tasting last night, if you were in attendance. Um, and of course, the content from the rest of the week as well. So as I said, welcome to day four. I am Maddie Barber, the Special Projects Editor at TTG, and I'll be guiding you through today alongside the TTG Luxury Editor and Publisher, April Hutchinson. But the first order of business is to announce yesterday's daily winner of the ESOP gift box. So congratulations to Noreen Nunguru from What the Doctor Recommends. So congratulations, Noreen. Um, we'll be in touch to send out your prize. Now, for today's virtual fams, we have four virtual fams this morning. We're going to be whisking you off to find out more about the luxury lodges of Australia. Firstly, with an enticing short film to sum up these fantastic places. Then that short film will be followed by a very special film made in South Australia's Barossa Valley with a walkthrough of the Louise, which is fresh from its multi-million dollar makeover. And then you're going to get the latest news and updates from across the rest of the portfolio in a live Q&A. After that, we at 9.30, we have virtual farms coming from the great golf courses of Australia, the ultimate winery experiences and the cultural attractions of Australia. So April will be on to tell you more about what's coming up in our golf themed virtual farm in about 30 minutes. But just before I hand over to Penny and Tori from the Luxury Lodges of Australia, I want to remind you to please look at the polls section. Uh, there are questions in there and of course they are for the ESOP goodies and a place on this Luxury Aussie fam. So the more you answer correctly today, the more chances you have of winning. If you didn't register for the Australia fam originally, but would like to now be considered, um, you can email my colleague, Sarah Lewington. She'll pop her email in the chat now. And without further ado, let's hand over to Luxury Lodges. Um, let's please stay in the room afterwards as well for the live Q&A. And let's check out these Luxury Lodges of Australia. Over to you, Tori. And Penny.
Hi and welcome. I'm Penny Rafferty, the Executive Chair of Luxury Lodges of Australia. And here we are at the Louise Barossa Valley, acquired by Bailey Lodges in 2021. And we're here to take a look at what a multi-million dollar glam over undertaken in 2022 means for guests at this lodge. And how the Louise provides a unique and exclusive backstage pass to what is globally regarded as Australia's premier food and wine region. But before we start, I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land we are on today. This is where the lands of three traditional owner groups meet, the Nadjeri, Peramank and Ghana people. In sharing stories of this land, we acknowledge these traditional owners and their connections to land and sea. We pay our respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders, past, present and emerging. The Louise is one of 19 lodges that are members of Luxury Lodges of Australia and it's especially significant as this was the location for the first meeting of the group in 2009. This collaboration between independently owned and operated Luxury Lodges and Camps, located in diverse and awe-inspiring regions all across Australia, has resulted in a central point of reference for anyone promoting, planning or selling experiential travel in Australia. Location, location, location is a vital characteristic of the lodges. Here at the Louise, location is all about being central to the famed vineyards, wineries, villages and people of the Barossa wine region. The lodge itself is set in the Barossa's gently rolling hills and surrounded by the region's trademark vineyards including some of the oldest vines in the world. Continuous reinvestment in the lodges is key to their enduring appeal. In 2022, the Louise underwent a $3 million glam over. So what has changed here? Let's take a look. Here we are in the main lodge. This is where guests come to dine, have a drink at the bar, relax in the guest lounge, mingle with other guests to share stories of the adventures of that day. Bailey Lodges engaged Max Pritchard, the esteemed architect of Southern Ocean Lodge, to re-envision the main lodge space. The roof line was raised, the entry space opened up with sweeping curved walls, and to allow for views through the lodge to the vineyards, providing that moment of wow and sense of arrival. A new walk-in wine cellar has been created in the manner of an Aladdin's cave, creating a showcase for a seriously impressive wine list. The glass prism holds more than 800 bottles, there are many more in the main cellar, and has been dubbed the Wine Lantern as it glows with the liquid stories behind the fine labels from the Barossa, South Australia and beyond. If you keep your eyes peeled, you'll see many of the Barossa's characters popping in and out to deliver wine or produce or dine here. This is such a wonderful reimagining of the main lodge building. Let's take a look at what's been done in the suites. There are three suite types at the Louise, all named after Barossa localities, Stonewell, Marananga and Bethany. Here we are in one of 10 Stonewall suites, which are some 95 square metres in size. The intent was to give the suites a really fresh contemporary look and feel, open up the spaces and bring in many of the signature Bailey Lodges touches. These bespoke artisanal touches really typify a luxury lodge and they're everywhere. Ross Gardens bedside lighting, Bemboka toweling and blankets, custom joinery, Malcolm Greenwood ceramics and the famed Bailey beds made locally in Adelaide. All suites include generous living spaces, private courtyards both in the front and the rear of the, the suite, high ceilings, French doors, a feature fireplace, commissioned artworks by local Barossa artists, and a beautiful bathroom with spa bath, walk-in rain shower, and private outdoor shower. Here we are in one of four Marananga suites. These generously sized suites are 129 square meters, and there is one more suite, a two bedroom Bethany suite, which is 157 square meters. All the suites have generous complimentary extras, which are replenished daily. This is not your regular mini bar. More than just the freshness of the new build, there are elements of the Bailey Lodge's DNA that flow through here, particularly in art and fine attention to design. 
Four female South Australian and Barossa Valley based artists were selected for commission works for the Louise. Emma Hack's photographic prints feature in the entry and the lounge. The collection created for the Louise features lush garden settings with Emma's muse painted to be at one with her environment. Surrounded by butterflies, vines and fruit found in the Barossa. Guests arriving at the Louise are welcomed by Emma's work titled Gumma and Galar featuring a glorious bright foliage of a gum tree in bloom during high summer, adorned with a cheeky galah. Tanya Wales is an Australian abstract artist based here in the Barossa. A confluence of technique create an otherworldly narrative, balanced by a sense of ambiguity and the illusion of simplicity. Renee de Sachs is an accomplished artist and active arts advocate in the Barossa, instrumental in launching several major art initiatives, including Wanderlust Greenwich and 100 Barossa Artists, which allowed her to collaborate with hundreds of regional artists. Her limited edition print and two commissioned prints feature in our Contour Bar. Janelle Amos lives it and creates just over the hill from the Louise on her family vineyard property. She was commissioned to create a series of works for the Marananga and Stonewell Suites. Her work is informed by the energy of the natural rural environment surrounding her Barossa life. So we know guests will sleep well here, surrounded by aesthetically beautiful artworks and comfort-inducing design elements, but why do they come here? To be part of the Luxury Lodges of Australia collection, a lodge must be more than just a place to stay. There is always a compelling reason to come here to do something. An easy way to think about the lodges is safari in Australia. These are journeys that reflect Australia's incredible diversity of location and experiences. So this could be a wildlife safari, food, rainforest, outback or desert safari. But in this case, think wine and food safari. The team at the Louise are super well connected with the region's makers, producers, innovators and characters and are able to secure a backstage pass to both the well-known and the secret stars of the Barossa. They offer guests a swag of experiences, from private wine tastings to yoga overlooking the vines, cooking classes, scenic hot air balloon flights, a breakfast excursion with the kangaroos, a visit to the Barossa farmer's market, and guidance on a multitude of cycling and hiking trails. Some Louise exclusive experiences have been created with nearby winemakers, including certified organic Sharky wines just across the road with their underground cellar experience and Taste the Ethereal, a premium tasting with Torbrek wines and a Discover Harvest at Isway Wines. Other highlights include some of the very well-known wineries of the Barossa. The Henschke Hill of Grace experience gives exclusive access to one of Australia's most revered vineyards, the Hill of Grace. Yolumba Winery and the signature tour of one of Australia's best known wine labels and historic family owned wineries. Nearby, historic winery Sepultsfield is a grand Barossa estate, a must visit for its heritage, private winery experiences, the Jam Factory Art Gallery, vast virgin olive oil products and it is the only winery known to release a century-old wine each year. You can taste your birth year. Casa Caboni is a cooking school in the beautiful Barossa town of Angerston. Guests learn to make pasta, gnocchi or risotto with owner Matteo Caboni, followed by a wonderful four-course lunch. Wonderground is an immersive art space in the vineyards, celebrating art, creativity and community in the Barossa. There are literally dozens of other wineries, large and small, eateries, galleries, makers and craftspeople to meet, and activities to do here to inspire guests to explore more and more. Three days is never quite enough. There's greatly heightened awareness these days of wellness and well-being and how we carry that with us when we travel. For some, the simple connection to nature is the way to reset. For many, travelling with their regular yoga or meditation practice is another. For some, nothing beats an expertly delivered massage. All are available here. There are also a range of amenities at the Louise, the fully equipped gym, sauna and infinity pool, looking out over the vineyards. 
one of the things about the Barossa is undeniably all about food and one of the most important aspects of a holiday for many travellers. So how does that play out here at the Louise? The lodges are all about the soft luxuries, particularly eat well, drink well and sleep well. The food and beverage offering, and especially how it embraces the local region and producers, is another one of those critical elements of a luxury lodge stay and the driver of positive impact and halo effect that they have on a regional community. The Barossa has the longest continuous non-Indigenous food culture in Australia. From the early Silesian settlers, the butcher-baker-winemaker traditions have run strong and importantly have evolved here, with the likes of Maggie Beer, Mac Mark McNamara, Tim Burke, Sam Smith and many more influencing and shaping the contemporary and exciting food culture of the region. As the saying goes, where good wine grows, so good food grows too. The food philosophy here at the Louise is simple. Local, local, local. It is underpinned by the agricultural abundance of the Barossa. Menus showcasing local produce act as sensory markers of the seasons. The kitchen team, led by Asher Blackford, source from their own modest yet abundant kitchen garden and actively seek small-scale producers and growers. The dining footprint supports holistic regenerative farming across the region. Award-winning Appalachian restaurant here headlines the lodge's dining offering, while contour bar and kitchen, a walk-in wine cellar and private dining room offer guests a variety of dining options over the course of their stay. Breakfast is served in Appalachian Restaurant, a feast of juices, South Australia's own tea bar teas and Barossa coffee roasters espresso. An a la carte menu includes free range eggs, locally produced small goods and greens freshly picked from the kitchen garden. In the evening, as the sun eases towards the horizon, guests gather in the lounge to mingle and sample sunset drinks and canapes as they share tales of the day's adventures and discoveries. Dinner is a highlight of a stay at the Louise, where guests can opt for a four-course dinner with matched wines here in Appalachian, or bar-style favourites in Contour Bar and Kitchen, which is a lighter, more casual option for those that have already had their fill of wining and dining in the Barossa that day. Either way, dining is a showcase of the freshest of seasonal ingredients locally produced by the Barossa community of farmers and winemakers. The stories of the growers and their produce are readily shared with guests, really deepening that sense of personal connection with the Barossa. During the day, guests tend to want to be out and about exploring the region. So the guest service team are definitely the people to know for lunch recommendations and to secure reservations at the wide range of eateries here in the region, from artisan bakeries to casual cafes, bistros or restaurants. While there is an awful lot to keep guests active exploring this magnificent and interesting region, there is also plenty of scope to stay put here at the Louise. Let the region come to you in the form of food, wine and people, and simply let life and the comfort of the lodge enfold you. Rates include accommodation with all of the in-suite extras, dinner and breakfast. And importantly, some of the very best Barossa connections travellers could hope for. It is so good to be back here. Hats off to the team here for an amazing refresh and reinvigoration of the Louise and the backstage pass to the Barossa. Come and visit soon. Hi, Tori. Hey, Maddie. Hi, I think, can you see me okay? Is my video working? Your video is not working at the moment. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, we'll try and fix that. But in the meantime, I just want to say a big thank you to Penny for that video. It's fantastic to see the no lodge um, fresh from its $3 million glam over. Um, I'll, while I try and fix my video, <laughs> um, Tori, would you just like to answer um, a question about when is the best time to visit? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much. For... 
Thank you very much for having us on here. Um, I'd also, because we're all in tourism, um, like to do a little bit of um, maybe time travel and say thank you to all of those who are tuning into the recording as well. I appreciate that. We'll just jump towards the future. Um, so Maddie just asked me about seasonality and I wanted to mention to you um, about some of the tips and tools of resources on the Luxury Lodges website that really help unlock all those key experiences um, that Penny was alluding to about getting out and doing things um, in the destinations where the lodges are located. So it's we've put together this um, range of um, experiences that you can actually sort by season, by lodge and by destination. We often get asked when is the best time to visit and it's not necessarily when is the best time to visit but what you can expect to see and do at that location at that particular time. So for example, if you were at the Louise right now, say sort of um, end of February, early March, um, you would realize that we're midst harvest and vintage down here. So there is a lot of um, experiences that you can do. And John's just asked us on the chat there, does the Louise do cellar door tours? So they really do um, sort of give you that personal introduction to those cellar doors. So they have relationships. They've got an exceptional cellar door just across the road from them called Sharkies. And they can do a behind the scenes um, tour of Sharkies um, for, for the guests of the Louise, as is many of the other personal introductions. And so this experience is, I suppose, on the website. If you sort by the Louise and sort by the time of year that your guests are going to go down, that will really unlock a lot of those additional personal connections to the industry that are in the Barossa there as well. Um, that you can actually do. So yes, that answers that question. So um, yeah, I'd really recommend hopping on the website. You know, you'll be able to see when the whale sharks are coming up in um, Ningaloo Reef, um, as well as many other seasonal experiences. Maddie, it's really interesting. There's 19 lodges um, in the collection and between them, they actually deliver over 300 additional experiences. And they're really encompassing wow. that economic nutrition because they're partnering with over 4,000 um, tourism businesses within the regions. So it really helps um, get out there and experience that destination with specific high-end guides, artisans, distillers, and then meet the makers as well. So lots of experiences on offer. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tori. <laughs> I'm glad to be back on screen. <laughs> Um, everyone that's watching, feel free to put your questions in the chat box. Uh, we have about seven minutes um, to take your questions. Uh, we had a couple already. John is asking, um, Tori, does Louise do cellar door tours? If you haven't already answered yes, that I one while I was sorting. That's account. okay. Yeah, I can see also Samantha um, oh, and Tracy as well. Tracy said, do we need to book experiences prior to arrival? Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, I would uh, recommend that through this. So there are a lot of... Um, there are some commissionable tours at the Louise that you can book in advance, or if you know that there is a particular um, experience or wine um, that your clients like in the Bross or that they would like to do when they're down there, you can just reach out to the guest services team and get them to organise that for you in advance. So yes, I would definitely recommend just tailoring that itinerary, particularly if you know them personally. However, if you don't and the guests arrive on site, the guest services team as part of their introduction really does do a bit of an uncovery of, of what they're hoping to get out of the Barossa and what connections they can help and personal introductions they can make for you. And this is a really good Amazing. question, actually, Good. Samantha had there, Maddie. Mm -hmm. Yes, about the highest yeah. occupancy. Yes, which, which lodge has the highest occupancy. So um, during... Uh, you know, the last couple of years, we have seen the demand in the lodges um, really increase for people that wanting that natural isolation. Um, the fact that they are, you know, only do accommodate a small number of guests at a time. So we've there are it, it does depend on the seasons, but Capella Lodge on Lord Howe Island is obviously particularly busy, so you'd like to book them up in advance. Um, but we have developed a um, an availability calendar, so I'd love to just quickly pop that in the chat for you because. This is actually a wonderful resource that we've got. It's just a guide because it is pulling through many of the lodges back end systems. But if you do know that you would like a lodge to be part of your highlight of an itinerary, you can go to the availability calendar um, and search by month or date, and then you'll get a bit of a snapshot of what the availability is looking like at the lodge. It's just a guide. Um, we are not a booking channel, so you do need to um, go through your particular channels to check availability um, and confirm your booking. So Southern Ocean Lodge, a question there, Maddie. Are you happy if I jump to that? Yes, absolutely. Please do. I'm not sure if my if my camera's working. So <laughs> you're That's doing a okay. brilliant job, so um, I'll just leave you to it. 
<laughs> no problem. So Sarah has asked, um, when is Southern Ocean Lodge due to reopen? So again, um, devastatingly, we did lose um, Southern Ocean Lodge back in the 2020 bushfires. Um, the Bailey Lodges have very much committed to rebuilding. It's currently happening right at this moment. Um, at the moment, it looks like we'll be opening sort of December, so towards the end of this year. And I believe that bookings will open up I haven't heard exactly, but sort of April, May time. So just keep one to watch. There is a news area on our website, which we update all Lodge News events offers. So again, I can send around a follow-up email um, in regards to those sort of tools and resources on the website. But the new news and when bookings are opening for Southern Ocean Lodge will be up on our website um, as soon as we find out. So yes, towards the end of the year, we're very excited to be welcoming guests back to Southern Ocean Lodge. Can you still hear me all right? Yeah, fabulous. Um, I was just wondering what um, kind of, do you have a platform where agents can get help with building itineraries? Yes, we do. Um, there, We have our the Luxury Lodges of Australia website is a really essential resource for experiential luxury in Australia. So 19 members, there is a lot of information there about experiences. We also have developed some multi-lodge itineraries. So there is actually over 30 itineraries on our website um, that you can actually build on. Um, we've left you a bit of white space at the bottom to put your contact details on. But really, um, we've done a lot of the legwork in terms of um, logistics of getting out into the regions and between these lodges to maximise the time for your guests on the ground um, rather than in transit, um, depending on the different state time zones and flight schedules. So if you need a bit of a guide or a, um, some suggestions, there's honeymoon, there's family, there's active, there's walking ones. So we've just sort of done it under theme. So please feel free to get some guided inspiration on it as well. Now, I can just see Kerry's just asked, can we mention if they're adult only? So Kerry, I'm not sure if you're talking about Southern Ocean Lodge and the Louise or whether you're talking about the whole collection, um, but I will touch on um, families as well because there are some lodges that are very well equipped to having families. And we've actually found um, even in the last couple of years that multi-generational travel is becoming a lot of popular at the lodges um, and reconnecting with family. So particularly lodges such as Sapphire down in Tasmania, Emirates one and only, Walgan Valley in the Blue Mountains, Mount Mulligan Lodge up in um, outback Queensland are very well skewed to, to families. There is also an area on our website which allocates the exact child names um, and ages. Um, so the Louise are very much more adult driven um, just because the, the, in, due to the dining and the restaurant um, cuisine uh, however, Southern Ocean Lodge welcomes children 10 and over. So there is a fact sheet on our website that outlines all the ages. And, you know, we all travel to learn and, and particularly with, um, myself with a young family, you know, just getting out there in nature and learning about the destination is so important. And a few of the lodges actually have some wonderful ranger programs where the, get, where the kids can go out and be really engaged um, in the experiences and the destination that they're in. I'm just looking back through the questions. What nationalities visit? Yes, yeah, so the lodges in Australia, um, we are sort of that experiential high-end luxury out in the regions. Um, internationally, I suppose our client mix, if you're talking about operation metrics, we do gather a lot of data from, from our clients. And they do say that um, majority is actually at the moment domestic. Um, when international is back to full capacity or pre-COVID, we were looking at the US being our biggest um, luxury market, followed by the UK, and then also Europe as well. So we are sort of seeing some of the other splashes of um, Asia coming through, but I would pre predominantly say you would probably see um, quite a few Australians there, followed by US and UK. I'm just looking back through the questions. I can see here. Oh, and thank you. Um, thank you, Sarah, for putting the link on the itineraries. That's great. And images on the website. So yes, we've got an image download library. and We've also got a video library. So you're very welcome to use our assets. We just ask that you actually use um, them in obviously to promote the relevant lodge and just mention, you know, for example, the Louise Barossa Valley, a luxury lodge of Australia. 
no problems. Um, thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It's never enough time. Um, my email address is um, contact details are under my um, little stand. It's just tori at luxurylodgesofaustralia.com.au. So please reach out to me um, with any questions you may have. And thanks again for the time to showcase um, the Louise and also Luxury Lodges of Australia.